This video is supported by the Internet Society in an effort to assist tribal nations with getting their 2.5 gigahertz licensed networks up and running. Hi there. My name is Christopher Mitchell, and I'm the director of the Community Broadband Networks Initiative at the Institute for Local Self-Reliance. Welcome to a series about LTE networks. Where we're gonna explore everything from why LTE networks are, are really great options for broadband deployment to the basics of building and configuring your own LTE network. So I hope you enjoy this series. So we've added our, our ENODBs, and now that our cell towers are turned on, at this point, we are running an LTE network. We've got our core, we've got our ENODBs, we're up and running, we've got, we're blasting signal out, you know, in our area, and, you know, we double checked our things, so we're not breaking the law. And the last thing we need to do is we're going to add users, and to do that, we're going to use SIM cards. Um, SIM cards have a lot of data in them, They and they provide basically all the configuration settings. So one of the nice things about LTE is whether it's handsets or fixed wireless, for the most part, you don't have to configure the end user CPE at all. You just plug a SIM in and you should be pretty good to go. And that's kind of the point of, of SIM cards. They're kind of a nice design for this. They're, I think, my they're my favorite part. I think cellular design got a lot of things wrong. And I think they did SIM cards really right. Like they're dealing with God knows how many users. You know, here's here's a SIM, you buy it at a store, plug it in. Can can you imagine them screwing with every single customer's device? Like, no, 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 no. They're managing it on the SIM card side. Weird factoid about SIMs, that's my favorite. Um, the little SIM card is a small embedded computer. It's the same exact uh, physical hardware as the chip on your credit card. So if you look at the if you look at the little credit card chip, you're like, oh, that's it. Kind of looks similar. It looks identical to a SIM if you put it next to a SIM card. We'll we'll play around with it. We'll look at them in person. Um, but anyway, so the SIM card's got a bunch of data that uniquely identifies it and stuff. And so the goal is you have to have information on the SIM and then in the core because the core is responsible for managing users and subscribers and stuff. So um, how do you get SIM cards? Um, usually when you buy an eNodeB, some manufacturer will include a handful for testing. Like, oh yeah, here's the thing, here's five SIMs, just have fun. Um, you can buy SIM cards. Um, buy sells, I think, sells their SIMs out in their stuff. ISPsupplies.com is usually a decent source for SIM cards. Um, you can also, uh, if you want large amounts, you can order custom SIMs from China. Uh, the minimum order size is 1,000. This is on Alibaba. Um, I am really happy to help you with this. I've done several orders. Uh, my favorite thing is you can get whatever you want printed on them. So we get pictures of people from the community. These are ones we did in Papua. I think they're really cool. I, I am always proud of this work. And I this is uh, one of my favorite little LTE things to support on. So if you want to buy a medium to large number of Sims, I will totally help you design them and sketch them out and do, uh, do all this process. But if you don't, if you just need a handful, go to ispsupplies.com. Um, so there's a lot of data in SIM cards. A lot of it is LTE specific and you don't have to pay attention to it, but there's uh, three things that you absolutely have to work with. And um, uh, that's the MZ, and then there's two Ks, or two keys, KI and OPC. So the MZ is a unique 15, 15 digit number that uniquely identifies the SIM card like in the world. And what it is, is it's, it's the same PLMN we talked about, it's five or six digits, and then nine or 10 digits, the other half of it just uniquely identifies the subscriber in the network. And then these two keys, KI and OPC, without going down the deep rabbit holes of cryptography, why they're named as such, they're two separate keys that are used to secure, one of them secures data that's encrypted from your handset to the network, and the other key encrypts data from the network to the handset. So you wanna keep them secure, you wanna keep them private, and that's how we know that our communication is incredibly secure in LTE. And so here's an example. Um, these keys are not accurate. Don't copy them down. I changed them. Uh, that MZ doesn't even exist. But here's uh, just an example. One that's you've got a bunch of information in your in your SIM card. What you're looking at is there's an MZ. It starts with my PLMN, so you know it's one of mine. It's subscriber 3451. You know, and there's God knows how many zeros left. We could grow that number a lot. And then there's just two keys that look like kind of made up uh, gibberish. How do we get this data onto the SIM? Uh, we don't do this. We don't manufacture hardware. There's like a really janky way of programming SIMs. Forget it. Um, when you, If you're buying SIM cards from any of these vendors, ask them. It's a really common dialogue. Hey, you know, you'll order SIM cards and they'll send you SIM cards. 
And like, what do I do with these? And you email them like, hey, you need to send me the keys. So like, oh yeah, our got like our bad, we forgot. So when you're buying them, you can just ask the vendor what the values are. They'll tell them, they'll tell you. Usually just these three are all you need. Um, or you can order them. If you're ordering them and I'm helping you, there's a big old order sheet you need to fill out. That's cool, we'll do it. Um, but generally assume that by the time you're interacting with the SIM cards, they've been preloaded with information and you've got a big old text file somewhere of this information. So what you need to worry about is entering this information into the core network now, because you're running your, you're building your own LTE network. You've ordered the SIMs, they've showed up in a box or whatever with the information. And the nice thing is that almost any core is gonna make this process very straightforward. And that's because once we've set this whole thing up, we've like gone to all the trouble of choosing the right core, buying it, connecting the eNodeB. Anyone writing core software, they know that what are you doing with it? Like now that's up and running, you know, you could look at it every afternoon, but really the two things you're gonna do is you're gonna check on the network, be like, is it running? Yes, great, no, that's bad or you're gonna manage users. You're gonna add users, subscribe them. So usually that's one of the biggest on front street things that you're gonna be able to find. So this is a screenshot of open 5GS, which I like because it's completely free and open. And we've just been going through all sorts of different uh, examples of hardware and software today. And this is the landing page and it's got a list of subscribers. So like right off the bat, like cool. And there's that nice big plus button on the bottom right. So we're gonna click this plus button and then it's going to pop up this, you know, add a subscriber, just kind of classic thing. And like, look at those fields right there, just like I mentioned on Front Street. You know, you've got the MZ, you've got the K, you've got the OPC, you know what they are. And um, if you scroll down, this page is actually quite long. And what you can do is these three fields, if they're all you set, you're fine. Everything else is usually defaulted out. You're going to be able to get out the door. Don't be intimidated by anything else that you can set. And if you look through them, actually, if you're curious, there's tons of, this is where um, one of the more interesting things about LTE is it's very, uh, um, a lot of stuff in general with cellular protocols are very control freaky. And so you can set certain users to have specific IP addresses. You can set phone numbers. You can set, I mean, they won't work until you hook up the rest of the phone system, but you can set those. You can throttle someone's uplink or downlink bandwidth. You can cut them off certain amounts of data. You can only let them onto certain parts of your network. It's, we're going down a huge rabbit hole of configuration options and the EPC supports them, maybe you haven't built the rest of the plumbing behind it. And when we're talking about basic internet access, you can just kind of ignore it all to get out the door. But this is where, um, as much as it's convoluted to get to this place, this is where cellular networks start really shining in terms of control and access. And when you think about that they're designed for, you know, um, countless users interacting in different ways with each other and with, across other networks, and you have to build roaming separately and all this. And you think about that, um, all this information's on the SIM that they're giving to you that like they put keys on here and they said, you know, like, good luck. So they have to be pretty secure, security conscious as well. Um, and this is, I think, when you start thinking about that origin story of cellular, a lot of these fields kind of make a bit more sense.